Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top five reasons why your washing machine won't fill. Stick around to the end of the video for an important washer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. The first thing we need to look at are the filter screens. They filter the water as it comes into the washer. Filter screens can be made of either metal or plastic. They're designed to stop particles from getting into the washer and clogging up the water inlet valve. There are two types of filter screens. One is located in the end of the fill hose and the other is inside the inlet valve itself. If the washer won't fill, it could be that the screens are clogged. So take your fill hoses off and check the screens. If they're clogged, you may just have to clean them, but if they're damaged, you'll have to replace them. Depending upon your model, the water inlet valve screens may be sold separately. If not, you'll have to replace the whole valve. If you need to order a part, simply go to AppliancePartsPros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Next thing to check is the water inlet valve. It controls the hot and cold water that enters the tub. Water inlet valves have solenoids that open and close to let water flow into the washer. If your washer is not filling, it could be that the valve is going bad. This could be caused by a damaged coil, jam plunger, or a clog in the valve. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we need to test it with a multimeter set to continuity once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. Remove the wiring harness from the solenoids. Some valves may have more than one. Then touch a probe to both terminals on each solenoid. If any of the solenoids show no continuity, then they're bad and you'll have to replace the water inlet valve. Now we need to look at the water level switch. It controls the amount of water going into the washer. The water level switch is a pressure switch that turns the water off when it gets to the correct level and then sends power to the motor to start the wash cycle. Inside the switch are two sets of contacts, one that sends power to the inlet valve until the washer is full, and another that sends power to the motor after the tub is full. On top loaders, it's usually mounted on the control panel behind the water level selector knob, and on front loaders, it's usually mounted on the upper cabinet frame. If the washer won't fill, the contacts that send power to the water inlet valve have likely failed. On front loaders, if your washer won't fill, you may get an error code related to the fill cycle. In that case, you'll have to get the text sheet, find your error code, and follow the troubleshooting steps to test the water level switch. For top loaders, we're going to test the switch for continuity to make sure it's sending power to the water inlet valve. You'll need to consult your wiring diagram to see which wires to test. In our case, the violet is power, the pink goes to the inlet valve, and the tan sends power to the motor. In order to test the switch, we need to take it off the machine so first remove the water level selector knob, then open up the console and remove the pressure hose from the switch. Now you can take the switch off and remove the wiring harness. Touch a probe to both the power and inlet valve terminals. You should have continuity. If not, you'll need to replace the water level switch. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next thing to check is the timer. It controls the functions of the washer. The timer is a set of contacts operated by one or more cams and driven by the timer motor. If your washer won't fill, it's possible that the contacts inside have failed and power is not being sent to the washer. It's usually located inside the control panel. There are many different timers out there, so you'll have to consult your wiring diagram to see which terminals to test. In order to test it, you'll have to turn the timer so that it's in the start of a cycle and pull the knob out. Then you're going to have to check the timer wiring harness to determine which terminals on the timer those wires plug into. In our case, it's the black and purple wires. Then check the terminals with a multimeter for continuity. If you don't get a reading, then the timer is bad and it needs to be replaced. Last thing to look at is the main control board. 
It controls the functions of the washer after you make your selections. The main control board receives the input from the user interface control board and collects information from sensors, switches, and other controls. It times and initiates the cycles and monitors the functions of the washer. If your washer is not filling, it could be that the board has failed. Depending upon your model, the control board may be mounted on the control panel itself or under the washer top. If the main control board has failed, it may not be sending power to the water inlet valve. In order to test it, you'll have to get the tech sheet and follow troubleshooting steps to determine if you need to replace the board. Your washer may have a specific test for the main control board to see if it's not sending power to the water inlet valve. Our says test to make sure it's sending power to the valve. If it's not, you'll need to replace the main control board. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Washing machine fill hose inspection is often overlooked by most people. If your fill hose burst, it can cause severe water damage to your home. A fill hose can flood your home with up to 500 gallons of water per hour, so it's important to inspect them regularly. Make sure to check the entire hose for any signs of bulging or leaking. Also make sure the fittings aren't corroded. Then shut off the water and look at the washers and screens inside. If they're clogged, you can just clean them out, but if they're rusted or damaged, you'll need to replace them. When you reinstall them or put new ones on, make sure the hose fittings on each end are tight so you don't get any leaks. There are many different types of hoses. The most common ones are rubber or braided stainless steel. Rubber is the most common type of hose, but if you want extra burst protection because of where the washer is installed, it's recommended that you upgrade to the stainless steel type. Some of the newer systems even have an auto shut off feature that shuts the water off if a leak or change in pressure is detected. Regardless of the hose type or the warranty it has, it's important to check them at least one to two times a year because they can fail at any time. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.